Now that we can see that a library-based implementation can solve the problem in a very generic manner, let's start formally defining the implementation. So the first one uh, would be that the fields are separated by commas. Now this is a constraint which we are imposing because it's a CSV parser. So any other separator will not be allowed. Looking back at the requirements, you might remember that the double quotes needed to be removed, which means that a field may be enclosed in double quotes. So that is an accommodation which the implementation needs to make. To extend the presence of uh, double quotes as an acceptable feature, the commas within the double quotes should be allowed, but the new line within the double quotes shouldn't be allowed. So if you think about it, you will realize that having a new line between the double quotes can create a lot of unintentional side effects and it will become a very cumbersome parser. So uh, you need to have this kind of a constraint uh, implemented, implemented upfront in the specifications. So nesting of double quotes uh, should be allowed and in that case uh, rep repeated double quotes should be able to wrap the whole thing. So it is just like the backslashes and uh, other things mentioned in comments of different languages. So this is the notation you may use that if, you, if there are repeated double quotes back to back, open double quotes, it means that it is start of a field. And even at the end, if there are repeated double uh, quotes closing, it means that it is the end of the field. So double quotes within double quotes should be considered as a valid uh, character, which should be part of the field whenever it is accessed. So empty fields are to be represented by uh, empty string or just an open double quote followed by a closed double quote. Because if just two comma separated things are considered, it's not very clear as to it's an empty field or not. So having it explicitly mentioned will provide a consistency to the library usage. So if any anomaly is found on that front, the library should be throwing an error. Since the requirements don't mention anything about trimming the white spaces, the leading and trailing white spaces are to be preserved. Let's walk over the formal uh, specifications for the interface which we defined earlier of this library function by function. The function now as its name suggests CSV get line reads only one line from the input file descriptor being provided to it. The function assumes that the input lines are terminated by one of these uh, following valid terminators like uh, carriage return, new line, carriage return followed by new line or end of file. The function should return a pointer to the line which is being read if the terminator is removed or it should return a null if the end of file occurs. The line may be of arbitrary length as you can assume. So Either the pointer should be returned or a null should be returned if the line is too big to fit into the uh, memory. The buffer holding the line must be treated like a read-only storage. So the caller must make a copy to preserve or change any of the contents. Otherwise, it might create a lot of problems down the line when it comes to the resource management. Let's look at the specifications for the CSV field function. To align with the normal language uh, specified containers, the fields uh, should be numbered from zero. So the nth field uh, from the recently read line by CSV get line needs to be returned. And as a corollary, return null if the provided uh, input provided by the user is negative or it is beyond the last field of the uh, data. To reiterate, the fields would be separated by commas and that's how the splitting of the data needs to be done using comma as a separator. As discussed earlier, the fields may be surrounded by double quotes. So the rules around the double quote pars uh, parsing need to be applied and such double quotes need to be removed unless they are 
in case the double quotes are intended and uh, represented uh, and in the manner mentioned earlier then they have to be replaced by a single double quotes to show that they were intentionally made to be part of the string and if comma is uh, present within an enclosure of double quotes it means it is the part of the string as well and shouldn't be considered as a separator like the line buffer the field also should be treated like a read only storage and the column must make a copy to preserve the changes now consider if csv field gets called before csv get line so in that case the output of this function will be undefined behavior because based on the previous state of the function certain garbage can get returned so this has to be informed to the users as well Let's look at the CSV end field uh, function. So this function will return the number of fields in the recently read line using the CSV get line. Like CSV field, CSV end field will also have an undefined behavior if it gets called before CSV get line is called. To wrap up our specifications, here are some open questions. So what should the CSV field and CSV end field return when CSV get line reaches end of file? The specification still doesn't specify how the ill-formed fields are going to be handled. So that is again something that needs to be thought about and formalized. Definitely more nuances will crop up during implementation. Remember, we still haven't spoken about multi-threading at all. But the thing is that with this kind of a process, you can see how an interface evolves when you start asking more and more questions from a user's perspective, the usability perspective, memory management, and the information hiding. So this was an exercise to highlight how a particular interface evolves. And as a programmer, how you need to formalize these specification into documentations and translate them into APIs which can reach the end user and serve majority of the use cases without undefined behavior. So you can continue thinking about this exercise but we will now move on to the next topic in the discussion.